Well, folks, it is time. We are back with your June 2022 Chalice Line Monthly after seven grueling rounds of intense combat. We have come away with a top 16 that uh, I legitimately... I, I don't even know if I want to say. You all are just going to laugh at me. <laughs> uh, it is interesting, to say the least. Um, and I'm joined by professional commentator uh, Farfa and unprofessional commentator uh, Peeps Yu-Gi-Oh!, how, how hey, are what you the hell? <laughs> what have you commentated? I commentated, like, one other one. I don't know. Ask him well, how much he bench presses. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Oh. I would. I don't want this to turn into ganging up on me. Instead, let's gang up <laughs> on our incredible duelists who have made it this far. We've got... Who, <sighs> occupying the top slot with three copies, three Salaman great players. It's truly like oh. we never left... 2018 it's shocking covid what uh after that also occupying three copies in the top slot marincess <laughs> jesus oh jeez. Uh, after that we've got two sun avalon duelists and then one a piece of sword soul flu on punk lich drytron dragon link hero and this phantom knight raid raptor deck that we keep seeing so very much of uh, you know, I guess I would have to say that Cybers is the best typing of uh, Reigns is a documentary and, uh, Soulburner X, uh, Aoi Zaizen forever. Yeah, it's the best description. It's not actually an anime or manga. It's just a, it's a docu-series and we're here live to witness it unfold. So, uh, Farfa, you're an expert in Salaman Great, uh, because... It is the most expensive and complete deck you own right now. Uh, would you say you are also an expert in Marincess? I don't know about Marincess, uh, but I know enough about the deck to understand how it fundamentally functions, if you want to go there. Sure. I can jump in here. Uh, I actually, that is the next deck I'm playing. I'm finally playing a new deck, and Marincess is the deck that I'm going to be playing. What if we um, jump into the flu on the Rees match? I mean, that sounds pretty no, good. No, 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 no. Oh, no I'd about... rather literally just stare at your Discord screen. <laughs> oh, we're going to commentate Flunder? Hold on. Let me practice for commentating Flunder. One second. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Holy fuck! Is that <laughs> Rabina? Yeah, yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Get excited. All right, okay. okay. Peeps, it's game two. The Flunder player has landed a Mystic Mine. What's your reaction? <laughs> We haven't even oh, got the first feature there in yes. game two. Is this a sweep? The Flunder sweep? Let's go. <laughs> Is that map D-Shifter again? Oh, boy. <laughs> wow, I heckin' love map D-Shifter. <laughs> I love Flunder because, like, it is actually a straight-up unbeatable deck if you're cheating. If you just, like, stack your deck, you cannot lose. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the, the cards don't line up in the right order and you lose. You have just described the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. That is oh, true. Not really. If you're playing uh, Sword Soul, how do you open a five-card hand that doesn't do exactly this? Okay, not bad. Uh, has a Tenyi discard. So I'm going to assume there's no other Tenyis because... You would uh, most likely go for the Baxia line first. Still going to get some value out of this, though, by getting the uh, Adara at the deck for a free recycle. Does put you in danger of Nibiru here, though, as you are now Wormlocked and you can't Baron protect this. Oh, man. I got to say, I, originally when I read uh, Kishing Long One, I was, like, really upset. I was like, well, this card is just way too good. Now that I realize how specifically this keeps, like, Almost exactly flew on to Reeves out of the metagame. I'm in. He's actually great. <laughs> I'm happy they printed him. It's really interesting. I, I feel like when people first read uh, Kishing, they were like, eh, it's okay. It's not that good. But wow, the utility it offers is so strong. Like the draw two combo and plus the, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, it's going to have to do a lot in this matchup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. So admittedly, it, it is really good against Salmon Great. You can banish Will, and if you just hold Keishing for a Link 2, it's really hard for this deck to um, push here. Uh, it's just a question of how early he wants to use Keishing. I personally like using it on a Link 2 because that's really the only way they can like do any meaningful damage to you is like climbing into like access or establishing uh, the uh, Sunlight Wolf to get resources. 
Now we are flexing one of the uh, new materials that Salman Great got from the ban list, the three copies of Circle. I mean, just an incredible boon to the archetype. We're going to use Gazelle here to pinch the Jack Jaguar for further extension, and I imagine we will see Baylinks momentarily. Do you think you would rather have three Gazelle, one Circle, or three Circle, one Gazelle? Oh, three Gazelle, one Circle. No shot. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I think Gazelle's great. I don't you, know. You would never banish Gazelle off of Desires. Okay, I yeah. guess you got a point. Yeah, so it's the desires and like hard drawing it just is a lot better um, because you are able to just trigger it from the hand. And I think that just gives you much more viable plays than having to like get to it because then you could just use your search on an extender like a, like a Foxy or a Jag instead if you want to discard. It is just huh. wild to me how when any deck from the like eternal format meta gets any piece of support or piece back from the ban list it just shoots right back into the meta like it feels like card design peaked during that time period and Striker, then they just had the only salad. way they could weak them yeah exactly the only way they could weaken those decks is with the ban list because as soon as they get anything off they just use any new tool that's been printed in the last year to just become a meta deck again it's wild I think it's uh, really funny because we're basically like one card away, or I suppose two cards away from that just coming full circle, no pun intended, and that's uh, Colossus and Harp coming back. Please, and, no right, Colossus I... back. <laughs> yeah, God. Okay, this is really strong. Keishing yep. banishing the uh, will is is very powerful. He's not going to be able to extend here, and just banishing it so it's not be able to be protected from Bailinx is, is super, super good. And this looks and... like a really weak salad setup. We've got the uh, Gazelle making the Baylinx, uh, the Jack Jaguar returning the Baylinx just to be the second monster. I can't imagine banishing the Sunlight Wolf doesn't just like straight up end the game. Yeah, I mean, there's no more extenders here. The Gazelle wasn't used as a special summon, but it's in the grave, so you don't have that. The will's gone. Um, I, yeah, there's nothing left, right? I, I can't think of anything else you can do here except hard draw like the second will because it technically didn't activate the first effect. Yeah, it looks like a pass. Yikes, and really, this is such a weak hand from Sword Soul, but you were right. I mean, Evil Longwan turns out is tailor-made to beat Salamangrate. It was a tech card released two years too late. <laughs> so this is exactly how my round eight match went, was uh, my opponent just played Salad, and I just had a Keishing and like nothing else, <laughs> and it was just enough. Like, it's, it's so good. Oh, and there's the normal. We found one. Dang, that's Sixth strong. Card. Holy smokes. <laughs> I think there's going to be any back row here that can really do much. Infip's nice, but we're at 44. Yeah, I think we just have game on board, right? So, unless we have a drowning mirror force, so this is going to be say, kind of yeah. Luck. I don't know if Salad started teching that, but I think it's over here. Wait, hang on. Wait, he had imperm. Wait, it just didn't imperm the long one. <laughs> Yeah, like you could have started your turn with Imperm Long One. It's like, why would I do um, that? He'll just banish it and yeah. deal 1,200. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, you know, that's the CSM, folks. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> it, you know, it's been a long day. It, easy to make Top cut nerves. Who, who among us has not looked at a hand and been like, dang, if only I had one more piece of interaction, I could have walked away with this. And then you realize the last card in your hand was not a starter. It was actually Forbidden Droplet. Did he draw it, maybe? Was there a draw that he used? It wasn't a buffalo, no? Like, no, I don't know. No there's, just, there's just no reason to not use Imperm. Okay, well, these things happen. Uh, so what do you don't think? Worry, Is Sword Soul winning? Is uh, Salman Great winning? Vote now on your phones. Got well, um, I don't know if I'd be voting for the decks here, but if you're not Im if using Imperm, I'm not sure if you have a chance. <laughs> I don't know. So Salamangrate great feels weird there in we the sense that the cards like Dark Ruler, Dark Ruler No More and Droplet don't really do that much against it. Like the cards that you're siding against are hand traps and potentially like back row, right? So I think you mentioned it earlier, Farfa, that there isn't like a hand trap that really hurts Salad that much. So in terms of your game two and three, like what are you boarding in that really beats Salamangrate? I think you're probably just digging for uh, back row removal. Yeah, probably. Like you yeah, could go I think Lightning Storm is pretty Harbies, popular right now. Lightning Storm. Yeah, if you basically can just force out Roar, or if they don't have Roar, just get rid of all of the disruption. Well, they can't really do anything with their monster interactions except hand trap you, which I think Sword Soul does a very good job of playing through itself as well. The Rock, pretty good. 
Yeah, people in chat are saying Nibiru, and like, of course, Nibiru beats Salomon great, but we're talking about like all the other hand traps that are played, like maybe yeah. Crow might be playable, but Nibiru is obviously the most impactful one. The other ones just feel really not that great. I significant amount of Sword Soul decks I saw over the weekend were all like citing Crow, and that's just extremely good against Despia, but hey, well, you got coverage in this matchup, and it is pretty strong here. Uh, if he did have Crow, I think he probably would have used it on that Foxy, whoever. Well, maybe not, actually, because we did discard. Maybe Roar or something, thinning. too. Just like, whatever. Like, the best you yeah. can go into in terms of disruption is the counter trap. We'll just prevent that. Yeah, that works, too. Crow hitting not just monsters. It's pretty good. And speaking of cards uh, so that got off the like... ban list, there he is. The big boy. He's returned. The Colossus out. This is the... one of the biggest disadvantages of the Salomon Great deck with the purer version is because when you use Stalio, you fire lock yourself. So if there is a Nibiru, there are ways to play through Nibiru in Salad. Not uh, many, admittedly. Um, but when you lock yourself to fire, you basically just get rid of all of that. Uh, all of those options because you can't extend with like link spider on the token uh and then going to a splash mage thereafter so stalio basically just tells your opponent that yeah if you have nibiru you just have it because i don't really see how you're uh gonna be getting any any other options if you use the stalio what do we end on here transcode no because it's an earth right <clears throat> Uh, this here, no, it's just gaining resources, setting the trap, and uh, firing off next turn. You can usually make a Baguska if you had, like, another rank 4. If you play, like, Foul, you can uh, special Foul out of the deck, and then Jaguar bounces the Foul, then brings itself back out, then you can go for a Baguska, but Ooh, it looks like we're fun going... One. Yeah, so this is good. It stops Imperm. Uh, sorry, not Imperm. Evenly matched. That's... I mean, technically, it stops Imperm, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I don't know if you're using Imperm just off the bat in Sword Soul here, but uh, that's usually the logic with Lingaribo. And All I think right, Evenly Matched it. is popular enough that you would probably want to consider it. Yeah. The all-important end of main. Nope, we're good. Oh, we got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're well, actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh! out here today. Yep. All right, let's see. So the, I would uh, be worried storm? here... <laughs> But should it's a good start. Yeah, wow, that's, that's a really good start. Uh, that's, yeah, I would be really scared if my opponent is not using any hand traps against my salad deck and just lets me play because there's a lot of blowouts that they can use. Uh, but it looks like we're just going to go with 10 yees and this is going to trade up at a minimum with the roar. It's one of those things where like, if your opponent doesn't interrupt your like big silly combo and you're playing like a combo deck, on one hand you're like, hooray, I don't have to contend with uh, hand traps. But on the other hand, you're like, well, that means every card in their hand has the potential to be a huge blowout. Yep, driller, droplet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, there comes the roar. Just it has to be used on the Vishuda. And oh, wow. we're on vessel. That's uh, that's something. That's good. So Vessel, really strong here, but not a card that I'm personally a huge fan of, but a lot of people, not, I wouldn't say a lot of people, like, generally there's like a couple of flex spots in Sword Soul. it's usually between Vessel and Circle, mm -hmm. and people kind of like opt to like play one or the other, and it looks like we're playing Vessel, sometimes both, but Vessel's like, personally I feel like it's only really strong when you're already playing, so if you can establish like a vanilla on the field and you have Vessel, it's good. Um... Doesn't really help you against Scythe, doesn't deal with the Despia board, even though we don't Ooh, have any. Ouch. Oh, Show me the reboot! <laughs> nope. Alright, well, we tried. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, that's not good. Um, there is some plays you can do here. Uh, you can kind of clear the board a little bit with Shaman plays. Right. And if we dumped Shatana, we definitely could have cleared the board, but I guess maybe we don't play Shatana. Oh, we do have a Chisana. Did he did he search it? Uh, no, we could have boarded out of it, maybe, or maybe it's an yeah. Eight, sometimes that's a card you side out. Um, Chisana, uh... I think, has more value when you play Circle, because yeah. you're able to just dodge a Imperm or Veiler on your normal summon, get the token, and then you summon Chisana, and then you still get level eight Synchro. But how does Chisana uh, so... clear the board here through D Barrier? Uh, well, you just uh, dump in the grave with the, what's it called? Um, vessel, and then you crash the monk, and then banish, it brings back the monk, it pops a card. It isn't Bailings in the grave? Well, no, you have to you crash can deal with, Yeah, so you have to crash once and then pop again. 
Oh, okay. All right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so but... Shaman deals with one Bailinx, and then uh, Shatana gets the second pop, but... Okay, yep. It would be enough here, because we just have two big monsters up, and unless we drew some sort of protection, and we know that there's no hand traps, uh, this should probably just be game. Outside of six-card Nibiru, I don't see how we're doing this. Um, Yorchi's actually yeah. uh, won the last CSM with a Sword Soul deck that I think was on, like, nine really powerful going second tools in the main. It was, like, triple tack, droplet, change of heart was in there. It was just ridiculous. Um, now, <laughs> the deck was a little more normal. Uh, it's, I want to say it was in, like, a quarter of the decks today. We did not see it resolve once. See, it's, it, it came back, and it was hype, you know, DM staple, but it's just not really that good, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this, you can play through Nibiru here, but we relinked the wolf for some reason. I guess it was just a special gazelle, but you didn't need to do that, because you can just go normal gazelle, uh, special back anything that you dumped, like the jaguar or the spinny, and then you just go update transcode. And that is four summons. So reincarnation summoning puts it at five, right? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. <laughs> so we could have just went with normal gazelle. Again, would have to be so exactly we're... sixth card Nibiru. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious what the rest of his hand is. It just has to just be like normal summons and tenies. Oh, there's the update jammer. Still... Yeah, okay, so one, two, three, that's four, and then, like, yeah, you've made access five here, so it is what it is. Maybe they held Nibiru, I mean... <laughs> yeah! <they>? True! <laughs> what if they, like, had a your so chain cool. on and just forgot to click it? <laughs> yeah, there are tall Crazy game, win condition. <laughs> yeah. They've been that's practicing the, on Master Duel. Legitimately the Master Duel strat. <laughs> I love when people, like, activate Update Jammer just because, like, for some reason, Update Jammer is not once per turn. Yeah. Even though you're going to be linking away the transcodes. Of course you but have blue I... hair and no once per turn. Shut up. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so if you have Nibiru, this is where you want to use it. Well, maybe you let him pop first just so it's less stats, I guess, and you're losing your monsters anyway. Mm-hmm. But this should just be game. Chat says, I believe update is a mandatory effect. It sure seems that way, doesn't it? Uh, it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> All right, let's All right. I love about Salomon Great. At like any time, access code is like threatened. Because a single Jack Jaguar normal summon can get to access code. So it's just really cool how... A lot of the time, Axis is just like a generic game winner, but in Salamigrade, it feels like a boss monster specifically for that deck. I don't know. I just, I like it a lot in this build. I think every Cyburst deck just has it as like the plan B. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's funny. Marincess <laughs> does not have room for it. Uh, that's not true. I think you play one Axis. No, sure. Yeah, definitely. What, what, yeah. Are you, yeah. what are you cutting for Axis? I. What are you cutting? I mean, it's just in there. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it is just in there, right? Yeah. No, no. Rinsus um, Waterlock? Not on turn three. Well, on turn yeah, three, like, you're going to have turn... one Link 4 on your side of the field and nothing else. What are you linking off? The only you're way going for game. Well, the only way to extend is to make more Waterlock guys. That's not true. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll see when all the Marincess is clear this round. You're right. <laughs> yeah, all the three of them. sweet. There's actually one of them is guaranteed because there's a Marincess mirror. <laughs> oh god. I hope that's still going no. by the time this is over. All right, Swords of Moye, that's a pretty good start. Reveal Taya oh, a reveal little Taya. worse. Uh, I think there's a delay here. Yep. Okay, this could be the end of the turn or there is a chance that we have long one and that's going to be the only way you can play through this. Easy. Yeah, oh, what a gamer. oh my god. I see my opponent is every Sword Soul player I've ever played against. <laughs> uh, so the Veiler is going to be inconsequential here because you just use the Long One token for the Moyi instead. You get to Chi Shao and then banish the Blackout, which gives you the second token that was negated. 
And that essentially gives you the full board anyway, just uh, without the relevant search, I suppose. And it's going to be quite hard to play through this, especially if we go for Qixing, which I'm hoping that he notices is pretty good against Salad. This is the silliest little interaction, just getting to banish the blackout and go for it again. Yeah, Blackout's Grave Effect is really good because of the Banish from deck, as well as when you normal summon Taya, you're not afraid of hand traps. You can just banish the Blackout, and you're always going to get uh, Fodder for a Synchro. My favorite part... Oh, let's see that Nibiru. <laughs> no. Nope. My favorite part of Sword Soul is that uh, if you make Qixing, you just start at 3,600 life points. It doesn't really feel fair. <laughs> All right, buffalo. Okay, normal buffalo, no imperm. If I, I swear to God, if you flip imperm on turn three, I'm going to scream. Like, I just, I want you to know that. Now, there's a chance he does draw it here, to be fair, so. Yeah, let's get these chain links in order this time, please. Okay, good. One, bay links, two. This Great. time we've decided we want to resolve the buffalo. <laughs> we need the draw. Ooh! Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I'm still Ooh. with you. So uh, that actually forces a lot, right? Because if you make an early Baguska, that's the yeah. end of interaction. Yeah, so it is a precarious position because if you banish this um, Exceed, which you kind of have to if you're scared of Baguska, it means your opponent can still play with a Foxy in the grave and uh, can potentially extend into full combo. Full combo being, I guess, just update, access, clearing. Oh, tell me they did not activate Exceed. <gasps> huh? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Do we have two in hand? We would have to have no. two or three, right? Well, one on field, two in hand, right? That's... Oh! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, oh no! What? Oh, no! Ow! Well, <laughs> I put a thousand points on you, Jans. What's going on? That's that's a rough one. <laughs> oh no, cosmic. Like, well, that's oh. an interesting board plan. I guess it makes sense. Cosmic going first. I don't know about that. Are you scared of mine? I imagine that'd have to be probably. It, right? I mean, I'm always scared of mine. I don't care about the matchup. I mean, cards terrifying. Cyclone going first can hit mine. It can hit Will, which is pretty nice as well. We saw it game right, one, can, right? Can kind of extend here with Spinny and Climb, but this Qixing is still live, so... This it's interesting is... that he used Qixing Kish, to... Sorry, use Cosmic on the field spell instead of Qixing, which... Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean... I, I think you want to use your revealed cards first, so you want to use Qixing first, and if there is a mine, you have Cosmic. That's a good point. Either way, I still think they're in a pretty good position here. The Sword Soul player, right? Yes. <laughs> God, this is looking pretty grim. Oh man, I'm so I feel so bad. Like, how do you draw double exceed? <laughs> it's it's exceed exceed lava golem, trust. <laughs> uh, There's been some crazy instances of variance in this tournament that have popped up. Like the one Marincis match with the desires for the two best cards ever. I can't remember what that was, but that was insane. It was a salad player too. It was desires for like, oh. it was like gazelle plus, uh, I don't know. It was insane though. Yeah, like On top of the Marincis player milling the battle ocean. The battle ocean mill is the funniest thing from the tournament for sure. Yeah. 10, 10 cards is a lot. Like, it is yeah. a huge portion of your deck. You're you're most likely going to lose something, and it just comes with the uh, cost of drawing two cards. Well, uh, we have passed back on Baylinks, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I imagine the set card is like a Roar or a Rage or something inconsequential. Ah, uh, that's Ooh. a pretty good normal, too. Yeah, we're just going to clean up here. Um, Torrential would have to be like the one pl play, and I don't think it's enough. Chat says set is imperm. Come on. We I all... mean, there is a chance if it's we... imperm, they drew it for turn or... Uh, off the so, buffalo. Well, I guess they drew it for turn, they would use it on Qixing, but it could be off the buffalo. Oh, it is! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Had to be off the buffalo. Had to be off the buffalo. <laughs> oh! oh. That's pain. True okay, pain. I, I, I'm trying to think. Um, if they specifically drew Imperm off the Buffalo, 
if they crash Baylinx and then Imperm Keyshing, is there any <laughs> other way that they could have uh, Impermed and then kept playing? I don't think so. No, I well no, because they pitched the Foxy, so they could have set the field spell, Foxied the field spell away to get it out, and then Spinnied to make Mirage Dalio to get Gazelle. Maybe. Oh my God, yeah, they they could have played through this even if they drew the Buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, so if you buffalo draw, you just go for the bailings, you crash the bailings. That means uh, the buffalo you, yeah, draw you... was exceed plus imperm? Come on, chat! <laughs> oh, that was a heartbreaker. Oh, that's a heartbreaker for sure. Oh, nay. And Sword Soul advances your cheese on track to win a second CSM. Wow. Hello, everybody. It's your boy, Joseph Rothschild, a.k.a. MBT. We are back with your top eight of the June 2022 Chalice Slime Monthly. We've got eight really cool decks remaining, and we're not going to be watching most of them. Uh, we have uh, Fluanderies. We have uh, the Punk Adventure deck that is just absolutely everywhere. Uh, we have Drytron. We've got Eldlich. We've got Sword Soul. And then we've got the two that we are watching, Dragon Link versus the number one represented deck in Top Cut, Marincess. I am joined once again by Farfa and Peeps. Are you all ready for some Marincess gaming? I'm excited to see the Dargons. There's uh, <laughs> a lot of different ways to build this deck, this format. You've got uh, the typical old, regular, good old faithful. There's uh, the Brave Engine, and I've seen some people incorporating punks now as well. So... Uh, yeah, it turns out that anything that can get you faster than anything else to Chaos Ruler is uh, is probably worth jamming. I'm shocked people are willing to play it in a format where you can set one and then contact away the board. It's weird, right? Because you would think like, oh, well, that's just like an auto lose. Why would you ever play this deck? But I don't know. Despia has just not been performing over the last couple of events, I think. It's around. Well, Despia hasn't been performing because of the beauty and power that is Marincess, which is what we're. What I'm excited to see. Uh, I give a fuck less about dragons. I'm happy to see Marincess. Happy the new support is here. The deck is insane. Um, yeah, really looking forward to that. I am. Uh, I am hoping that you're right. Uh, Marincess was one of the higher represented decks uh, at the CSM because MBT viewers, Keck W. Uh, but it's worth noting that it's it's got some it's got some game to it. Um, two of the three duelists who cleared to the top sixteen have cleared to top eight, and uh, I guess based on the way the bracket is built, we could see the Marincess finals close out. So hoping for that. All, All right. right, we're in. So I have no idea how much relies on the uh, die roll. I'd imagine a lot. Um, one of the cool new tools that Dragon Link got that we've seen a lot today is Boral End Dragon. That card is unreal. Yeah, it's uh, actually just like a hard counter to a lot of decks. It cannot be targeted or destroyed by battle or card effect. And, uh, you know, ask Despia players how to yell out that one, eh? It's, it's a Pretty little strange. Much... It can't be, I think, targeted by monster effects. So you can still, like... Take it with it, yeah. change of heart, but <laughs> no, there's not a good out for a lot of strategies. Uh, Marincess, I imagine, is one of those strategies that doesn't have a very clean out. Um, oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> that's, that's... Admittedly, you can like just hit it really hard, I think, with like a big bubble reef or something. Oh, wow, this Ash didn't do anything. But it sticks around because no battle. The Ash, I mean, you would prefer it to resolve, of course. Um, your combos, if you don't have an extender, are way whacker, which is why here we're sending the uh, seahorse so we can add that back to hand and maybe get something going. Yeah, and taking a look at um, the card that Signet Mining discarded, which was Marincess Dive, which is a very good extender. Um, big issue there is now that they lack that extender because the Signet Mining got ashed and they got rid of the dive, now they I don't even know if they can go for a Crystal Heart line here. It just depends. We'll we'll see what the other cards in hand are. I imagine they're two hand traps because Marincess is one of those cyber decks where mm -hmm. it plays, you know, 15 engine, maybe 20 engine, and then the rest is just a bunch of hand traps. But we'll see how the rest of the turn goes. I think if your first play is like mining discard, you're probably not going to discard dive, right? If you have blue tang in hand. Maybe they have two dive. 
Oh, there oh, we go. Okay. Yeah, two dies. Never mind. <laughs> All right, we'll get Spring Girl here, right? Yep. Okay, so blue is. tank plus dive. Is is that like, do you oh, get Toad enough. set up in this as well? They should be able to. Uh, we've got Spring Girl in rotation, which is nice. We can go Anemone here in order to uh, uh, swing into the blue tang, and that's two fours if we want. Since we haven't used the effect of the Spring Girl in hand, uh, we can also use the Coral Anemone if we link off with the Bahamut Shark to put the Spring Girl back into hand and then summon it afterwards that way. Uh, we might be able to get everything if that last card in hand is a water monster. Pretty neat through Ash Blossom. Yeah, think, that was really yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, th I think like that's one of like the better things about this deck now is that it is quite resilient to hand traps and... There isn't really a good Ash target, I think, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Like, Ash like a Blue Tang Mill? Probably not, right? It's not great. Yeah. I mean, that is the Ash target, is uh, Sign Up Mining. Uh, you can uh, Ash the Dive, but usually it matters very little. Going into Marbled Rock here is the three, rather than the um, the uh, Triangle. Uh, we're just going to use Marbled Rock to cycle one of these bad boys back. Admittedly, this is still looking kind of weak on the Marincess player's end because, again, it's a cyber deck that really relies on its generic interaction, the hand traps that you draw. So I'm assuming that they go for Bubble Reef here and then try to draw into something mm -hmm. um, rather than Aqua Argonaut to negate a spell trap. So that's my assumption. I don't know for sure what this player would necessarily want to do, but I guess we'll wait and see and find out. And for what it's worth, anything you would be negating with uh, Aqua Argonaut is a field spell against Dragon Link, so it really doesn't have a lot of utility. Like, you try to hit almost exactly a quick launch, right? And if you can't do that, yeah. That or Chaos Space, probably. It's rough. Like, there's just so many good power spells in Dragons. Like, there's, you know, the field spells, which, like, help you extend. There's oh, okay. Aqua Argonaut. Chaos Space, quick launch and like right potentially with a brave engine and also e telly with punks oh that's a good so, point if it is on punk it is on uh brave then there is a ton you have to worry about yeah All right, 44 so cards is, also. I mean, it's nice it's it's aqua argonaut it's toad it's some number of interactions in the hand but it's not protected by crystal heart and uh we're gonna see how much that matters i guess one thing Dargans can do well, let's play through Disruption and uh, a Spell and Trap Negate and a Omni Negate. I mean, if the hand's good enough, it uh, should be fine. Now, one thing you got to be careful with is uh, when are you going to be using these Negates? Because I'm always scared of Dragons using Gamma from the hand on their own turn. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's always terrifying. Chat says, mm. so this so board this... loses to a Kaiju? I mean, yes, uh play the kaijus and see what happens yeah you won't make it pass <laughs> around four with kaijus <laughs> sorry uh one unknown card in hand right and spring gun uh yeah okay yeah. real quick i think they use the spring girl no, the though spring no, they, in I, grave. I, oh okay yeah. so i think it's two unknowns in hand no one of them is a dive oh okay oh my gosh that's not no it's not ideal I'm actually shocked yeah. they didn't make Bubble Reef under these conditions. Yeah, that's what yeah, I, I think was saying. Yeah, I like heavy hand traps, you just have to go for the draws, right? Because spell trap negate, I just I don't think that's enough versus five card dragon hand. Ooh, that's and... a rough one. I it's one of those spells that you probably have to let go. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you it again, like it's it's really scary to use negates against dragons with no monsters. And you probably just have to wait for right. Okay, we're going. For we're going... It. it resolves, so we'll go and get the Coral Anemone back and uh, negate the Foolish. But now shields are down, one Omni and one Unknown in hand. That Foolish was probably not very, uh, probably going to be quite inconsequential. It does a, a decent amount in this. Oh, okay, that's, <laughs> that's a rough that. normal. Oh. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Okay, fine. Oh, special yeah. absolute. So, we could chain block a Romulus play here and just keep the Romulus. Uh, okay, we're going to go for a Striker Dragon first. Uh, negating and destroying is quite rough here because you lose the body and you've already used your normal summon. It is a really tantalizing toad, which makes me feel like they have like 
a called or something. Like, I can't imagine making this play if there wasn't also an extender. Yeah, there has to be an extender here. Otherwise, your turn just ends, right? Like, you're down a body and you're just, yeah, like, you, you need something. Okay, uh, wave, that's not... Wave's fine, but the body's a lot more important. Yeah. And I think Romulus with the Absurditor as Chainlink 2 is going to be super powerful here. Yeah. But how far is that going to get you? Point of order, doesn't Wave provide... I think Wave provides some amount of protection to the Link 4, is that right? Yeah, so... Um, affected, right? Yeah, they are unaffected by uh, what... All face-up monsters cards. you control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Yes. Oh, wow. All of monsters. Gee, I thought it was yeah. just Marine Fist. No, it's crazy. Okay, it's pretty good. We have an unaffected Toad now. That's be quite annoying to deal with. Well, let's see how far the Ravine can get us. Ravine's really nice. It gets you to Absoluter, which gets your Rocket Monsters, but that card's already been used, so... I think Ravine is probably going to be mostly used as a bait here. I don't know if there's too many dragons that you can send that are good in this situation. I think like the af after Absoluter, like you're typically going for like Sephard or Levianir if you already have one or the other. Oh, <laughs> right, go back in hand. Happens. I did draw the Brave Engine, but the wrong portion. <laughs> Destrudo. See, that's weird because you right. do need another guy on field though here. Yeah. Like I said, I think this is probably just trying to bait something. I think it's quite tempting to see like Druget and Dragon Ravine being activated. And oh, baby dragon, that's huge. That's that's really good. That's really good. That so explains the, uh, gonna be able to... the striker earlier as well. Uh it, this is this is quite strong. You can chain block a Hulk here, and you're st oh. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, I need to read this Argonaut. So nothing on the field can be attacked except Argonaut? Right. Right. Okay. Hmm. It's that wave second effect that's like putting a bit of a... <laughs> it's like, you do have to actually out the Argonaut somehow. It's kind of crusty. I guess yeah. it's Moral Sword, right? That's what they have to go for. I, maybe yeah I'm, I'm thinking maybe there was like a hulk line oh Aww. that is such an early apo that's so nice yeah okay, so that's going to completely nullify the toad but we have to extend with just a black dragon last card and in hand? the last card in hand so this like has to just be like quick launch right oh, oh okay okay oh. i wasn't thinking about pisty no tracer though. I'm bringing back striker dragon here. Okay. Striker for Stri what, oh recharger? okay so striker dragon pop add back recharger recharger special summon a monster from the grave potentially special back Romulus to climb more with the with the link. <laughs> We're getting back pisty. Just getting back pisty. Interesting. Does this not revive Romulus? should do uh Ron, it's got to be a dark right for recharger yeah uh target one of those destroyed no. monster special a dark monster oh yeah it does have to be dark specifically okay all right all right so we just you know did the recharger shuffle now what <laughs> i mean you can't go battle because you can't hit over the toad it'd be really so... funny if they made the apo to go battle and hit over the toad before realizing yeah, that Aqua Argonaut effect is crazy. This is that point when you're playing against Dragon Link when you're just terrified because one card, one unknown card in hand could mean like a whole Link 4 line or something. I don't know. It's just like if it's levy, it's very that scary could be the end of the game. The yeah, right, exactly. Like, this is terrifying. If, if me as the Marinsis player here, I'm scared because. I mean, there's three bodies on board. The toad is going to get hit with the oppo, and like I, have, I feel like I have nothing. Oh! No, says, <laughs> says. All right, we got, we got it. That, that was game one. Had nothing. Oh. oh. <laughs> you can unclench your cheeks. <laughs> they probably. were, they were very clenched. I think, I think they were probably recognizing like the Apollo line was a bit mistake. I think their idea there was most likely to go battle phase, and then realized you can't. 
actually attack over the toad. Mm -hmm. So not really much you can do there. Uh, I think you were actually right about the Boral Sword play. That might that actually should have probably I mean, that's been the only way to get out of it, right? Yeah, like Boral Sword does clear the board, but I guess it doesn't give you any follow up. But better than just insta losing, I suppose. Okay. And if I was the in the perspective of the Marinsis player again, I think the correct toad was the Destrudo, right? Like. It's weird. Uh, hard, I mean, really, with Dragon Link, it's just really difficult to say without perfect information. Uh, this is a decent start. That's uh, Chaos Space is always so good going first, and no hand traps. Oh! Oh! <laughs> no what hand was that far You said something no about no hand traps? <laughs> so the, the, the one hand trap that is going to really <laughs> eat you up here is Droll. That's... Oh, like, how yeah. Do you, uh, Reverse how do you feel back about, T for this deck. How do you feel about Droll this format? <laughs> Very good. Card is insane. Uh, Roll is like so hit or miss though, right? It, like it yeah. either like FTKs or just doesn't do anything against your opponent. Mm, you're wrong. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you <laughs> draw do, against? What do we do Punk? here? What do you draw against Punk Synchro? I don't know. First thing you can. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. they, can still, they can still scythe lock on their draw, right? You know? I'm, I'm starting to see why you really I'll... like this card, Peeps. It requires no <laughs> thought whatsoever. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they Love cards yellow, like that. And you click yes. <laughs> it's <a> legitimate <laughs> click yes, Turbo. Also, think... what did you say? Something about scythe? I'll just have Droplet. Yeah, you know. Like, just have it. There you go. Oh, uh, God. This How is many Recharger pain. two games in a row. So uh, what can we do here? Uh... We we have shooting a shooting riser and snow pass <laughs> <laughs> with three in grave. Is there is, is there a so more bad. fun shooting riser send in Dragon Link? Can we like um I don't know. I mean Thanks so Arishel. Yeah, can, AFD. Go AFD. That's a great idea. You can you can send like token collector zombie world for other matchups, but against Marine Cess, I don't think there's any relevant foolish burial against the set. Oh good we got oh, the no. baby. We got oh, the FTK, no. it's over. <laughs> Wait. It's over. So what do we do? Shockingly, this is you. really good against Marine Cess. I was it is. <laughs> oh, oh my no, god, I uh -oh. swear if this is enough. Ash. I know Ash. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now the Dragon Link player drolls. Let's see it. That uh, that also. Oh, would that's win really the game. good. That's that, really good. Yeah. So I think you'd have to like Valor this and then Res like use <laughs> the seal or something. This is how you play through seal. So pretty good. How many copies of this do they play? Like one or two? Yeah, just the one. Some people play two, but it is. I mean, it's just so crazy. I never would have thought like Goblinburg was broken in this strategy. <laughs> Ooh, I'm actually shocked to see them on Mandarin. I personally do not like Mandarin. I know that some people are playing it as a one-up because it's such a juicy send off of uh, the uh, Blue Tang. But, I mean, it's a good card. Yeah, Mandarin's nice. I like it. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to play it, but I really like the card, so I probably will. I'm not sure. Oh, poor Gia. That droll. That <laughs> droll was harsh. It's actual pain. Uh. A, a long member of the peeps cord. I, I wish I could root for you here, Gia, but Marincess is just too based. What battle phase? I, we gotta, I we it. gotta get rid of the uh, the hieratic seal. Yep. The only negative here is that you also kind of want to just have the board be empty against dragons for the clapback, but whatever you summon here should get you another body. It's either gonna be Black Meadow or Absoluter. I doubt there's gonna be any floodgates. It wouldn't really like sloth wouldn't really help when there's two monsters that are beating over mm -hmm. okay so you want to go absurder uh yeah you, you, you kind of have to punch over just let them search because you just don't want a dragon body on the field but it does always just feel bad to let your opponent search a rocket yeah droll so again just droll on my turn <laughs> <laughs> this just instantly sets you what the hell are you looking at joseph Oh, I was just going to the Riddler rap real quick, queuing up the next, uh, the next. It's for context, chat. He's he like alt tabbed on Discord with the share screen and went to a very sus test tech talk. Anyway, uh, what did we search? Did we get Synchron or Tracer? 
I, I was looking at the Riddler. Sorry, it was Tracer. He's gonna say I could... it was Tracer. Okay. <sighs> okay. So how do you extend from here? Then you you can. Uh, um, there's. Uh... Well, there's one. Oh. That card. So nettle. This is a weird include in the deck. If you're not playing the Abyss Shark, you play like Sea Nettle, which is. A silly card. The argument against Abyss Shark is that it's two bodies instead of one, but the second body you get locks you from summoning from the hand for the rest of the turn, which the deck really wants to do. Sea Nettle doesn't do that, but it's just like a free guy. Um, so, and the and the argument for Sea Nettle is, you know, then you also get to shuffle back uh, the Anemone, the Sea Angel, the Blue Slug that you're only able to play. Oh one my of. god! Wow, dive. and we had way or dive god. the whole time. Wow, that's pretty good. This is this is really good. Oh, oh no. that's that's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. So we can use the uh, coral anemone yeah. here to get back one of these bad boys, but uh, that's a stinker. Yeah, that's that's definitely like the end of the turn. I'm pretty oh. sure. It's probably the end of the game as well. Uh, uh it's one and one, isn't it? Looks like the other. Marincess player who was playing against uh, Jason Leonard on Punk Adventure has dropped. So this is now the lone Marincesser in contention. This is game two though, right? And they're one and one? Yeah. Or should be one and one after this? Yeah, provided Dragonlink can figure out how to assemble lethal from this position. With four yeah, cards? So should be, yeah, with a tracer in hand. Should be doable. And a baby dragon with a chaos space draw. Yep, yep, yep. Looking good. Uh, so, Marine Test went turn one, sign up mining, discard Valor, which means that maybe they have another disruption or they just really needed the extenders to be able to play. So, you might have to circumvent a hand trap here, which could be a little bit annoying, but the train's leaving the station. Droll. <laughs> Droll two. I don't even know if that would do much, I honestly. I think so. I think you discard that over Valor, right? Yeah, for sure. Probably, yeah. Wrong. Yeah, this is looking really strong. Uh, typically, you end the game with, um, well, you can do it in many different ways, but Unicorn Spin into Access is looking quite strong. Uh, it's quite hard to play under Nibiru, I think, when you're trying to go for a game. So, unless you want to specifically deal with Nibiru as the six cards, then, well, it might not be six cards. It could have opened Nibiru, and then the Droll just was enough. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't they know. didn't. They just played into seals. They didn't summon enough to have Nibiru be activated yeah. during the first turn. So it, it's a possibility. But even then, I mean, look at all the advantage Dragonlink has right now. This is... Yeah, uh, you just go for it. What are the best generic level 8 synchros? Uh, Ooh, Savage think Dragon? Maybe one that we might see momentarily. Yeah, Magic Dragon's really good. I wouldn't... I don't... Is, can you really call that generic? It depends on the deck. I mean, that that card just doesn't do anything in, in some decks, right? But yeah, you have to be playing, playing a deck with powerful graveyard effects, and there's there's just not very many of those. <laughs> Stardust, baby. No, Joseph hates that card. No, awful card, terrible. Hey, awful. People playing um Black Rose Dragon. Uh, what's the the card in Sword Soul? Uh, that prevents you from summoning level fives from Dragon Ruler format. Uh, people are just oh, playing Crimson Blader. Just play yeah. People are just playing old synchros just to play them. There's no reason for this. I actually considered playing Crimson Blader, but uh, yeah, never came up. Yeah, that's why oh, you Berserker's got top sixteen. Generic, isn't he? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I love Berserker. He's so Berserker is Berserker is generic. He is he is crazy strong. Yeah, it was randomly super good against Drytron. Oh, because it'll uh, banish their guys? Yeah, they just activate Alpha in hand, and you Berserker banish, and they are kind of stumped. All right, time for that all-important game three. Uh, I, it's weird. We haven't gotten to say this yet, but I really do think this one could go either way. <laughs> like, uh, well, it depends there's on the a hand lot of traps. Stuff that yeah, exactly, right? It, it really just depends on the hand traps. Um, it depends on what direction the Marincis player wants to go. If they 
have a couple hand traps in hand and they really want to continue, you know, diversifying their interaction, they can make Bubble Reef and try to draw more. But then again, there's some variance in that. So you could just go Argonaut like they did in the first or sec the first game, I think. Um, or they could just side and go. They have to try play under uh, Nibiru, right? So mm -hmm. there yeah. is a line that does that, right? Uh, there is pretty uh, much yeah. no way to do it, right? How the hell are you I... playing under Nibiru? Well, you, can you not I make Toad on 5? Five? Five. Yeah, you can make Toad on 5, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, right, sure. A couple hands that do it. Because, like, Bahamut Shark is a card, you know? I hear mm. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of uh, floodgates you can bring in against dragons, to be honest, but we did see the Droll, and uh, that is super, super powerful. I think you're always going to keep that in your deck. And dragons, most likely can't really side too much. I feel like I would want to bring in back row hate. Yeah. Yeah. But I I don't know. It's weird. Because like I feel like the only back row sides that you could play with Marine Cess would be like rivalry goes in, right? And they, and they just don't do anything against dragons. What? I, go, I don't know if I agree with that. Goes into stuff against dragon, right? Like, especially if they go for Romulus? Uh, well, if you flip it after they summon Romulus and have nothing else on field, it's okay. Nah, I guess that's fair, but... No, I think uh, Dark Dragon is not that much of a restrictive lock for You just play like rocket. you already resolved your Tracer. Yeah, just pl play under a Tracer for the whole time. <laughs> I guess it's a fair point. Now, if we make Kragen with the Goza... Yeah! Now... Yeah! <laughs> now we're oh, talking. Now we're talking, baby. Kragen is the funniest include in this deck because there are matchups where it's an FTK, but, you know, this is not one of them. Okay, Spring Girl's a good uh, normal. Uh, it's not yep. the best normal. All right, so let's not mill the Battle Ocean. Oh, my God. Do you oh, even uh, activate so Spring, Spring Girl? Do it? She excavates three and then adds a Marine Cess. That is, uh, that is uh, Marine Cess Blue Tang. Spring Girl mills equal to the number of Marine Cesses you control, and if you hit a Marine Cess, it burns your opponent. It's their, like, time win con. Uh, but it's also just generally good to get Marin Cesses into the graveyard. But if you mill the ocean, you just lose on the spot. I feel like it's not even worth using if you're not at a real tournament, right? Yeah, you would think so. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm never activating that effect unless I'm in game three close to time. That's just me. Like call, <laughs> calling a judge because my opponent is a suboptimally activating the effect of Spring Girl. <laughs> <laughs> It's the chain block, too. Okay, that's pretty reasonable, I suppose. Yeah. All right, Anemone time. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, so what does this do? There's the okay, Veiler. That's a sick Veiler. That's a really good Veiler. Oh, no. no. Oh, that's a really sick Veiler. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tough. Well, that, that strikes me as we'll the end of the see. game. Still potentially a lot to play through though yeah if the two back row are like anything relevant yeah two back row and like probably one hand trap oh, that's okay. well that, that invalidates a lot now yeah. here's where that goes in goes crazy <laughs> you're right dude <laughs> no, you're true, right actually. it gets immediately bounced by uh draco back right no not they, if just, they, they just they just never it. find it yeah if he goes in here, they can't search it. Yeah, I'm in. I think what you would have to do is, like, crash your token. If they have goes in right. And then try and play in main phase two, but... Looks like we're just going to be playing adventure cards here. Oh boy, I sure hope we search... What is it called? Papillon? We have oh! the draw. <laughs> we have the draw. Damn. That's uh... very good. So the weird thing here is that um, Coral Anemone is sitting at 2,000, just like the token is. And I, and if I remember correctly, Fateful for, protects from battle. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Well, yeah. the important thing here is we're just going to Draco back the Coral Anemone. If no, actually, it's the Draco back that uh, protects from battle. What? Well, I mean, the Fateful protects equipped monsters and the Draco back. Oh, those, yeah. right. Okay. Oh, is that how that works? Okay. Yeah. Um, You can climb with uh hulk i suppose but there's just not a lot to do under droll with dragon yeah it's it's weird and like if you bounce the anemone like they don't even get to float so they have to find something crazy off the top oh we're, we're but going they're for the not doing that 
Okay, hitting the back row tells me that they're trying to like go for game, I feel. Because they just don't be. care about the the search. And game under Droll is pretty brave, but haha, <laughs> no pun intended, but it is <laughs> quite hard when you've been drolled. We've got the Destrudo. Destrudo and Water Enchantress. this format. Great card. Uh, it's so frustrating. I just, I hate cards like that. Just cards that just you activate and they just linger for the whole turn, like D Shifter, Lancia. I just, oh, uh, they're just really frustrating cards, man. I get that you hate them philosophically, but I like that they give me free wins. True. That can happen. I think you would need more control for a free win, Joseph. Come on. Whoa, you're right. <laughs> I remember uh, Hartford. Oh, I'm just... Oh, okay. I can see something here. We can actually manipulate the Distrito to be level 8 so that we can go for a level 8 Synchro with the token and then go for Magic Dragon. Admittedly, we can't add anything on the Droll, but, but you can just mill something. 5. Yeah, I like that. That's but, like a cool idea. Or we'll just go. But I'm not sure if it really is worth it. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to go for the Hulk. So any other extender here is just going to be access codes. All right. I think you have to use your wave here. That's Misses a pretty on the Drake decent combat. wave. Well, oh, I was like, it's not really a miss because you can wave from hand. Oh, no, you cannot. Yeah, you need to control link three for it to be used in the hand. So now the, this begs the question, what was that set card that was bounced off Draco back? Was it a bluff? Was it like it's an like imperm? Or something. If it was an imperm, that'd be really good. Now that it's could back in the hand, there's no... Or wait, actually, no, Coral and Emini's still there. Never mind. No. <laughs> could be a dead cross out. Maybe we did see the millet off of the spring in. Mm -hmm. Although, actually... He went Valor, so the cross out probably would have hit Valor. So it's I doubt it's cross out. It could just be Impermia. Now, where do you go from here, Bucko? They're thinking about it. God, this game you is have to so crash. close. I'm really shocked. Uh, just no dragon plays though. I guess. Yeah. So we saw a Distrito in a ravine, but. Eh. Normal ash. Oh, we didn't have our normal summon. Wow. Yeah. Goes for a seven. Shooting That's riser. That's a pretty good seven. Okay. Thank God they limited this card. <laughs> <laughs> well, dumping snow for the opponent. Follow up is really good here. Oh, that's a good ash. <laughs> that's really strong. Oh, this is such a tight one. This is a good game. <laughs> It's pretty rough as well because you don't get the level uh, manipulation here. Wait, you, wait, wait, what, what is Enchantress doing? Oh, she's she can add to grave. grave. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know we could do that. <laughs> Ooh, we're just we're All just right, doing this is, uh, this is a great this unicorn is, is good... trying to prevent yeah. the anemone from floating. But it feels like if we draw like a blue tang off the top, we do just win the game. The ash was so yeah. important because it was most likely going to send like snow. Although there's there is an argument to side that out going second, uh, but it, there is a chance like they probably kept it in. You can't really risk that. I mean, it's, oh, uh, the Marinsis leak. Oh, it's, it's unaffected. unaffected. <gasps> oh my God! Wave, wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I disastrous. Forget. That's disastrous. Oh, just that. just... oh, oh no! It's over. It's done. It's yeah. game oh, wow. done. Do, so we, do we know the last card in hand for the Dragon Link player? Or is it an unknown? It was a bounce stat card. Oh no. Oh, for the Dragon Link player? No, I'm not sure. Um But Marine Test now has a top deck, a recycled what was that, Spring Gun? And yeah, Spring Girl uh, is a free summon, yeah. Oh no. There's the Spring Girl. Oh. Alright, so we're going uh Blue Slug, CL2, Spring Girl, Spring Girl. Or uh, Blue Slug bounced back one of the Spring Girls. And then you can special it and then go again, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Do we, have we... Oh, we, we hit Seahorse. Are you kidding me? That That's so good. It's, it's decent. <laughs> it's <insane>. decent. <laughs> so the weird part about this is um, the decks are always only on one Sea Angel or one Coral Anemone. So we can't do the whole line here. 
We're going to have to, like, be satisfied. Yeah, we went with the 2C Angel here. We're going to have to be satisfied with probably, like, the marbled rock line. We won't be able to get everything. But, I mean, it should be enough to close the door if that card in hand isn't anything. If you go for marbled rock, you can just, like, clear the unicorn and then add back the wave, right? Yeah. So, that's really good. Uh, adds the field spell, actually, instead of the... Instead of a dive? Have we used the dive already? That was what we got back last turn with the uh, anemone. Oh, right, right. Okay. Wait, what? They're on two anemone? What is in the extra yeah, deck here? Say, yeah, I was going to say, is it two anemone kind of good? Oh, no, it's really good. It's just they usually don't have room for it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we don't know the last card in hand. Uh, there is a world where it's Nibiru. Because the uh, oh, turn one finish. was not that strong. So Whoa. there is a world where that was held. There is a wild... This extra deck is actually extremely strange. Whoa. Ash. Yeah, it is. Last card. Um, okay, so Ash was the last card, but that still doesn't turn off the Marbled Rock line, um, All right, are, which is really good. Are you ready for the, the cut here? They are not playing Bubble Reef. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. And What and are you... For some reason, they have found room for the Stealth Kragen spawn. I don't know what they Are... cut to get there. Wait, so not just Kragen, but spawn too? <laughs> yes. I don't know how they <laughs> got there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are they? Right, can well... we check? Are they playing an 18-card extra? <laughs> I can semi-understand maybe not playing Reef, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe you just I mean, I disagree, the... but yeah. It's... It's not, like, outlandish, I suppose, but... Kragen spawn? No, nah, you've lost me there, buddy. Uh, they cut the Splash Mage, the area, uh, it looks like, for those two. The area, I get, but the Splash Mage? Like, oh. Uh, <laughs> All right, this is it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Up what do you got? A wave. Uh, not a lot here. Can't add anything with the uh, Fateful because you've used the Draco back, so your top deck's going to have to be discard if you want Griffin, which doesn't do anything by itself. Uh, the one possible draw here would have to be... You can... There's just nothing that beats Wave. At so. least you get the free token, right, off the Fateful Adventure, just cycling the Enchantress. But that does nothing, less than nothing. I think they used the Enchantress, didn't they? To add back from the Grave last yeah. turn? They use the Enchantress to add right back from Grave, so they had a discard for Unicorn. But the Marinsis wave. Yeah. Hello. All right. Oh, I guess we are playing two copies. Let's go for it. There's the Enchantress. Pitch the Enchantress. Enchantress for wave. So we've got wave plus unknown. I truly can't think of a single card that would possibly do it. Uh... I mean, if there was, like, two Draco back, you could use the discard to guarantee that you have to keep the card in hand, but Yo. that's not going to happen. He's trying. Maybe he plays two Draco back. Well, I'm not against that. There was a... <laughs> if anyone has seen the Vision deck profile, you know, that there is a world where you play two Tracer's Draco back. Tracer's a good Tracer. draw! Tracer's a good one! That's good. good. Does not beat wave, I don't think. No, it does not. And activating the effect blanks the right of Aramis here in hand. It doesn't beat the droplet either! Oh, come on! Oh. Unnecessary. Not necessary. And the coral anemone. <laughs> oh. Set, sent from the uh, equip. Not yep. bad. Decent. Okay, we get to Ravine here pitching the... Uh the right we could dump the strudo again oh yeah but you have two trinners at that point not really doing much we've already ran through our halk Ooh, romulus ad doesn't do anything well i'm struggling here i don't know gia's playing for a reason i suppose so if in doubt play it out maybe that your opponent wrong. forgets they have a wave in hand <laughs> they just like Ah, shit, it's it's like an imperm and I have monsters on my side of the field. Whoops. It's you like think dragons have uh, overstayed their, their welcome? In yes! The I'm so, yes. I'm so sick of this deck. Really? 
I, yeah. I think I, I really like it. I've I've ended up softening on it just because the deck is not nearly as frustrating these days. But yeah. Oh, that's a rough yeah. One. It definitely yeah. do a lot of unfair unfair things. And that's gonna be it. Oh, Marincess oh advances. Girls. That was such a sick set. Oh, that Shout one guy. Shoutouts to women, the Slayer of Dragons. I, I got to tell you that one guy. I'll tell you this. <clears throat> MJ can still cost. You were right. I shouldn't have. I really should not have. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Joseph Rothschild, a.k.a. MBT, and we are back with the top four of the June 2022 Chalice Line Monthly. We have got a couple of really epic decks still in contention. I'm talking about, shockingly, Marincess. <laughs> There's still a Marincess player alive. Marincess versus Drytron, and the match we will be watching, previous CSM winner, your Cheese on Sword Soul versus Cyber VX, aka Jason Leonard on Punk Adventure. I am joined once again by Farfa and by Peeps. That was wrong. How are you two doing? You excited for the Marincess sweep? Hell yeah, I'm, man. I believe in, in, in this, this, this wall soul is for me. I'm with, I'm with the Rawful Copter, so I believe in you, Cheese. Well, he started off with a strong desires. No I was going to say, <laughs> looks like a pretty decent beginning. All right. Okay, normal nice, coming. normal. You can always uh, predict that that's going to resolve if you've gone desires and they've not responded to you. So let's see if we have a... Ooh, okay. I think Chi seems to consistently draw Tenyi with no other... Uh, no no other Tenyi to uh, really try and Ooh. put something up here. Oh, no long one! That's, that's the first no time we've one. seen him not draw a long one. It's been glued to his hand. <laughs> And Cyber VX starting with the Aramis here. This is pretty good. We'll bait the back row. Uh, I imagine that the best case scenario for your cheese is that it's a blackout, and uh, this will black it out. Blackout is not that great when they've opened the Brave Engine. I mean, right. it just has to immediately trade with it, I suppose, but it's really these hand traps that have to try put in work now. And you're... Oh. Normal. I can get Damn, it. that's a strong normal. <laughs> So I think if there's a blackout, the you have here. to blackout here. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. Uh, you probably yeah. just even equip the Draco back before <laughs> firing the effect. Just go do it. See what happens. No, no, we'll go get um, oh, yeah. our friend. Okay, goes for it now. Yeah, I think if it's a blackout, you have to use it here. So that's probably telling me that's like an imperm. And with a wandering griffin on the field... It's not going to do anything at all, actually. Yeah. We've Chaining been watching yeah. Jason just take these unbelievable uh, wins with this deck. I mean, this Adventure Punk deck is so absolutely competent. And it shocks me that it's just not... It doesn't, to me, feel like it's even doing anything, right? Like, it just has a bunch of really powerful cards. And it just goes and goes and goes. And then the game ends. It's just the That's culmination of, like... Sorry, go on. No, no, I was just going to say, that's what's frustrating about the, um, it, it, Imperm feels weird, because if you're playing against an adventurer deck, and you get stopped, and you have to set the Imperm, like, the Imperm is just not, it's just invalidated because of Draco back, but, yeah, I don't know, feels weird, this format. Okay, if they don't draw the Brave Engine, which, you know, is kind of hard, I guess, the six copies of it, but, yeah, it's it's okay in other scenarios. Um, I think like this deck is just everything about modern Yu-Gi-Oh, like surmised, right? Like it's it's just like <laughs> right. some good cards, some good yeah. engines, and hand traps, and yeah, it's just an extra deck toolbox that get, deals with any situation and just puts up a really obnoxious combo that most decks can't really play through. I do like um, if you showed a Yugi Boomer this deck, they would just they'd feel so vindicated. It, it'd just be they'd be like I told you. <laughs> this I'm is what you. i told you i knew it was wrong it'd be like if like actual boomers really found out that we had wasted hundreds of thousands every year on avocado toasts they'd be like i i, I was right all along true yeah like if you just give up your netflix subscription you should be able to afford half of this extra deck within a year <laughs> <laughs> when it's reprinted of course uh, Rocks Rose mm -hmm. into Basil Rose. I mean, you've all seen this before. I think the funniest thing we watched Jason do was make a really early uh, Dragon Ruler and Mill Red Rose, Rocks Rose, Basil shoot and just sort of look at the graveyard <laughs> and be like, I, I don't know, man. I think his deck is generally really favored in this matchup, even losing the dice roll. Because uh, yeah. it's, it's okay going second into a Sword Soul board. 
Um, and then pulse hiding, like the token collector dump is, is unreal. Like, it's so hard to beat this deck because you have to contend with Scythe. And even if you stop Scythe, they have token collector. So, I mean, yeah. it's no, it's like, it's like no mistake, right? That the top three decks, this and Sword Soul and Branded Despia are all just incredibly good, both on the play and the draw. But this feels like a whole level above them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, ooh, then go for game. Um, oh, I thought we would just I'll... snow here and win. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Well, wait. We did have game. Wait, wait, wait am I missing something? <laughs> what's what's uh, going on, buddy? Well, you can't use the snow on the turn it's sent, but oh, right. you can just go union un uh, unicorn access with the basil rose, and that's that's just game. Uh, but I guess we're gonna play with the with his feelings a little bit here and just uh, scythe into. Ooh. That's Ooh. not bad. Oh wait, that actually doesn't do anything, right? Because we just take out for the defense position guy. Um. Well, I mean, you just Baron negate. Or you could do that, yeah. I, I don't think there's a reason not to Baron negate unless we're on main deck talents, but... Well, yeah. I don't want to then... spoil it for you, but we're on main deck Ooh. talents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Droplets. Uh... Okay, is Cheese going to punish the not OTKing here? It looked like it, it. I think this is doable. That this actually just outs the board. Um, yeah, if we send enough. Because you, you don't even need to send anything. You just yeah, droplet I... negate the Baron, and it lightning storm resolves. Another lightning storm. Okay. So we can chain uh, I... what the Dagda I... and the Halk here. I I don't understand. Um... Why can't we still do the same line? Like, don't we go, uh, TG in defense position here? Set the scythe and then pop our own scythe. Wait, no, oh, ooh, we had to send a monster. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, we've... Oh, hey! Oh, it's still... Wait, no, this still works. Yeah, you just negate the TG oh, on resolution. Oh, right, because it doesn't choose until resolution. Smart. Yeah, uh, yeah, this, this, this works fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, like, this is so bad. Is he, is he just going to get punished for not killing? Like, this is... It does actually seem like the end of the game, right? We have the entire 10 E line. I, no, I, no, I no, think... no, no, no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still three cards in that hand. Come yeah, there is still a... Oh, <laughs> God, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We, oh. We, we, got the ash. we got the ash. All right, let's see. Last card, Vachetta. Any Tenyi. Oh, no, it's not a Tenyi. Okay, it has to just be... It has to be Taya now, I think, to really... Taya or Moi. Or any Sword Soul, I think, can, like, clear... Uh, the grave is no swords, I, I'm pretty sure. Huh, last card in hand just has to be a defensive uh, card, it looks like. So you attack here, they draw, you just put in for, put, uh, go in for some damage. Shit. Okay, gonna go for Shaman. <laughs> Three Sinkle lightning storm! storm. Three <laughs> lightning storm? Are you shitting me? Uh, Alright, so... We do get a level 8 Synchro, uh, and I think you just go for Chi Shao. You won't get the search. We oh, we still have Snow, yeah. of course. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's wow. that's rough. It feels like with just one more tool, if one of these Lightning Storms was just something else, like a triple tack, we could have done it. The thing is, it's so hard to interact with Snow. There's like basically nothing yep. in a typical main deck that deals with Snow except Call By. So I'm going to start playing Meister. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't do it either, right? If you have enough in Grave, no, it doesn't. Just keep going. Listen, Meister is the only hand trap that interacts with uh, Necroworld Banshee, so oh, I think that's... it's a good card. Maybe. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, Earth Machine Man. So we get to Shut up. back the, uh, <laughs> the Scythe here, we trigger it, and this, I mean, we were talking about it earlier. This deck doesn't really have, like follow-up but i imagine you can cobble together an access code here yeah i think with enough cards in hand like this and uh not fully depleting them of those resources you can yeah like you said just cobble together an access play especially with snow being live now you can uh use it as multiple materials last card in hand is uh a vishuda no an ashuna right so as long as you can navigate through two defense position monster, you don't even need to do anything. You're just <laughs> you just hit have it already. Hard. Yeah, we're on like 1400. 
This was really dangerous by uh, Jason. I mean, he could have uh, could have lost this one for by Naughty King there, but snow coming in clutch. Why are we making edema <laughs> for more snows? Uh, so we have one more material for snow. Yeah, I think it's relevant for the attributes. An extra pop for access codes. Got light, dark now instead of. Oh yeah, because Dagda is light as well. Mm -hmm. Are we bothering popping? Can't we just? Oh wait, no, I, we can't. We have to. There's something that the Tenyi Link does or with battle. I think I uh, can't remember. If you attack a face up non effect, it can pop a card. So just hit oh. the shaman. Yeah, we're just we're just being careful. I guess it's fair. Okay. And we're playing for face time, up. of course, as well. Thanks to kind of running your face up non effect. Yeah, I think just punching shaman there was game, but. Got to flex on our opponent a little bit, I suppose. I'm citing Iron Wall for snow. My friend, there are 10 cards I can tell you that are better than Iron Wall. <laughs> Please do not do that. <laughs> now, <Right>. hold on. <laughs> now, hang on. Hang on. Iron Wall stops evenly matched, too. So, oh. in a control deck? Mm -hmm. You know? There's nothing more sad than seeing an Iron Wall flipped on evenly. Hasn't happened many times, but when it does, ooh, stop shifter! You all are just describing Lance. You are just writing <laughs> Lance. <laughs> stop shifter! Stops flu. Ah, oh, see, I'm getting people on board. Let's go. Choo choo. Lancia, Lancia doesn't stop snow. I'll let you think about why. Why does it? I don't understand. Oh. That's... Oh. Too bad, I think, right? Long one, reveal long one. I mean, I can't imagine what the rest of the hand is, but it's got to be Taya. Oh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Sword soul woaded, baby. <laughs> no, no, oh, and we drew Aramis here. Let's go. <laughs> Gamma Enchantrum, Aramis here. Let's go. Oh, wow. That... Yep. Jason. All right, what's our normal stuff? Is it sign again? Go, drop the sign again. Okay, we're searching first. Oh my sure. god, if he is saying it again. Critter in the name of our Lord 2020. No normal summon and no tenyes. That's a pretty upsetting hand. Oh my god, double gamma. We were never getting out of this one, folks. <laughs> Look at my main deck. We're not making it out of the hood. All right, Draco back, bounce a card, and uh, any tuner should uh, get you gaming. You know, we've complained about this a lot. At least I have. You know, <laughs> the adventurer engine being extremely consistent, uh, and it being able to like invalidate different back row, and it being able to basically be like nine copies of Called by the Grave because of the Griffin Negate. But even the more frustrating thing is that it's just four thousand damage. Like, yeah, look at this. I've won a this ton is big of as games shit. Like, <laughs> where I just like I don't have anything but adventures, and I'm like, oh, okay, combat, and they activate one must negate, and I'm like, all right, let's do combat again. That was a good Ooh, game. I haven't even. I have a normal summoned, and you're on a two-turn clock. Like, g g eat my stuff. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> eat those cards. The only way I guess it could have been worse was if they made the token a tuner, right? Yeah. Ooh, that would be nice. It would like the Sword Soul tokens. Uh, How are we using this punk? Oh, it was special summon from it. From the Foxy too. From, yeah. uh, right, okay. Ooh, but we added Hit a back row here. here. Do we not have the uh, the punk that turns the foxy tune into the full combo? Oh, we don't because we oh, drew wow. Sangan. We don't have Sangan. Everything. Let's get some critters in chat. <laughs> do you have a critter emo? <laughs> I think you do, right? I have a I have a Sangan with the goggles. I do love that one. It's really weird. I don't think this card is like atypical of punk anymore. I'm not too sure too many people have been playing it. Uh, I know Hani popularized it first at Hartford, I want to say. Um, but I think like generally people just actually just use their normal summon for a tuner. Yeah. And just having more hand traps and stuff is generally just better. Uh, I don't think he's playing Prosperity, does okay. it? Okay, that's, that's like mm -hmm. a, you know, that's something questionable card honestly i wonder if you just let this resolve and you go okay you got two cards yeah I got of course you do you go you go unicorn access <laughs> that's literally the end of the game <laughs> god oh did we add arborea there 
And we added Valor. Seems pretty good. I think probably what what Jason's thinking about is like if we go Unicorn Access, then it has to be seven hundred damage somewhere. Yeah, we're missing. It's an Arborian, damage, right? And we're like walking into a Nibiru, maybe. If like the nah. one unknown is Nibiru. Wait, no, there's an Arborian in hand, right? I thought they got Effect Valor. Oh. Well, if, if they search Effect Valor, it means they have Arborea. Right? This also does it. Yeah, this also does it. Yeah. Regardless, you know, if you just dome them and then negate the normal summon, I think they're probably dead at this point anyway. Oh, come on! Unnecessary! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that is so mean! That is so mean! Did you board out of <laughs> snow? Why would you do this? Oh, because snow isn't lethal. Oh, great. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so one, one of the cards in hand is a back row. One is an unknown, but wasn't a normal summon. So they had to yeah. draw on the normal. <laughs> Let's dissect how Sword Soul can beat this. Yeah, yeah this, sure. This could With still three happen. cards. <laughs> what if the set cards are life equalizer? What about that? Uh, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> what am I what am I missing? Why didn't did we did we not have Arborea access? No, I, I don't think we <laughs> Who did. Who cares? The, like, we have a game. This is funnier. <laughs> you sure. Are, you are so toxic. Oh my god. <laughs> toxic. Yeah, double <sighs> GG would do it, I suppose. D buyer is such a strange card to side for this deck. I, I don't think it's very good. Right, because like they do get to just do so much with links. Yeah, going first, um, I think D-Barrier is maybe not worth siding anymore. I think it's too centralized around Despia Sword Soul, and you can go to a major event and not play against those. Yeah. That's so shocking, by the way. Just, like, miss them all day. Yeah. Um, all right. My friend made top 64, and he didn't play a single Despia or Sword Soul, so... And looks like Jason Leonard will be advancing to the finals. Wow. Punk Adventure. Well, folks, it is time. We've had a lot of goofs and gaffs today, a lot of spoofs and laughs, but we are now in the finals of the June 2022 Chalice Slime Monthly. Over seven rounds of Swiss and four rounds of Top Cut, we have come to the two greatest duelists in the history of time, and two repeat performers as well. Shrug, playing their, I guess, named deck, the deck they're known for, Drytron, and CyberVX, a.k.a. Jason Leonard on Punk Adventure. I am joined for the final time by Farfa and Peeps. Are you two ready to not have to watch Marincess for the first time today? Oh, that saddens me. But I'm very happy to watch this. Um, two very good players play, two very good decks. Um, happy to be commentating in the Wife Guy Coalition. Let's go. Let's get this, uh, let's get this game going. Oh my god, wow, that is actually... Like we should have a three v three team. <laughs> yes, <laughs> three wife guys through LCS. Hit us up next time. We'll do the wife guy uh, best of three, and if we lose, <laughs> we can go spend some time with our wives. Yeah, we'll just we're married. We're just, you know just spend time with you know our we have wives. Chat. All right, well, that's why we're bad at Yu Gi Oh. On that as much as you want, but baby, we've opened the Alpha Zeta Ben Ten, so you know oh. who's, who's the real winner here. I was gonna say I, I appreciate the sanctity of monogamous marriage, but I also appreciate you know opening full combo. And I mean, look at that. That's it doesn't get much better than that, baby. Oh yeah, it's strong. Uh, there's the Diviner, which can get you a Light Fairy if he really wants to prevent hand traps. We can go for a search of Herald of the Orange Light. And uh, continue our combo like there that. There it is! We haven't seen it yet today, but that's Ammer Factor Pain, the Imagination Overlord. This card is insane. Uh, yeah, so this card, if you haven't seen it, uh, makes your opponent skip their main phase one, uh, which makes them unable to beat your Vanity's Ruler. But importantly, it also negates the effects of Fusion, Synchro, and Xyz monsters while they're on the field. And against a deck like Jason's, which is making a lot of Synchro monsters, that is not... Terrible. It's not awful. It's basically a D barrier on legs, if you think about it. And um, I don't know. It's uh, not great into this matchup, right? With the Brave Engine and all the Link stuff. Right. There's so... a lot that can beat it, but it'll be beating it in main phase two. So you might get to survive until the next turn. Yeah. Garthron think... just needs a turn three. 
That's all Drytron <laughs> needs. Battle phase is really underrated because like that's typically how you try and like bait things and at least like clear the board. And just with one main phase two, it's gonna be quite uh, quite rough, especially with half of your extra deck negated. Uh, but like I said, I think the Brave Engine puts in so much work against this card. Oh my god, we even get orange light here. That's just unthinkable. Crazy. Do we this already so have crack. access to Itaden? I don't think we do. Okay, we're going for the Medionis. Uh, we can lose the the Delta here to cycle for Benten and then make a Beatrice, which we've seen Shrug do a couple of times. So Beatrice for Snow, I think, is quite strong in this matchup because any sort of synchro play is going to be dealt with with the Armor Factor Pain, but any sort of Link play can be stopped with the Snow. Right. If you try and climb up, you can just wow. book the uh, non-Link monster. We are still going. Oh my goodness. What? This is the fourth Ben 10 trigger. What on earth could we be adding at this point? Natasha. Uh, this is a card that uh, Shrug has really leaned on in previous matches as a way to just, I mean, win the game immediately uh, on turn three. Oh! <laughs> well, that Ooh. is a way to potentially beat the uh, the Brave line. Uh, Mirage oh, Light, Amor <laughs> Factor, Mascarena. Yeah. With five in hand and a full grave, this is... Directly to battle. Enjoy your armor factor, folks. All right, so we are now so in phase two. Like, I think Drytron looks a lot stronger than it maybe is, but I don't know. I guess it's warranted with how strong it is. Okay, Fateful is we probably... probably donk this. Yeah, I yeah. think you have to... Pitch the uh, Natasha, a card that we do not care about. We've got the Mascarena for a four. We've got the Orange Light in hand. Ammer Factor stays. Right comes down, but they'd have to have hard opened Draco back. Yeah, this right doesn't do too much without the uh, Fateful, so I think you're okay with this. Itali's a good one, but probably not. These are all enough. good cards, but you are uh, in main phase two, and Ammer Factor Pain is going to put in some work here. The other thing that Main Phase 2 enables you to do is turn this Masquerade into like a two-mat Apo and just ensure that you're getting both of them. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm probably holding for a Unicorn. Yep, speaking of. Okay, wants to go for the Apollo. You are 100% correct. All right, the Ziyaman getting negated. And, uh, I mean... You have to have opened the Foxy Tune, minus two, Apo that as well, and then you've got one card versus the Orange Light, and Driver in the opener! Let's go! <laughs> I don't know if either of you mentioned it, though. Another really great thing about Amor Factor is when you use IP to make the Apo, and you're in main phase two, so they can't beat it o beat over it. So no matter how weak the Apo yeah. is, it's getting its two negates. I, so. I literally just yeah, yeah. I'm going to attack you, peeps. You probably did just say that, didn't you? Yeah. All right, so... uh predictions are up so this is unfortunately a really poor position to be in if you're jason leonard just because uh you know in the past drytron was like this big silly combo deck games two and three you could bring in like the forbidden droplets the things that beat the herald sometimes kaijus lava golems were around that format etc now it's just this really capable deck that uh, going second gets not only easy access to zeus but also all of the sweepers it gets to play triple tack it gets to play forbidden droplet it gets to play lightning storm so you are up against pretty much everything here uh what you're hoping to see i imagine is like anti-spell is really crazy and Droll and Lockbird is also nuts. We will likely be seeing that off the Sangan. That was a really good search against Drytron. Um, I was mentioning earlier, I think Drytron is a lot... I think it looks a lot stronger than it really is. Like, obviously, if you open Alpha Zeta and your opponent has no disruptions in a deck that, you know, very notoriously plays a lot of disruption, yeah, it's going to look really strong. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, like, you know, I think like a hand trap deck like this, not opening hand traps and then losing a dice roll. I think it's all very, you know, a lot had to go right. Has to there, do a I lot think. with variance. Yeah. Like a different so, hand could have easily beaten that. Yeah. Like it's, it's weird, right? Cause Drytron does sort of just fold to like one interrupt or they play through three. So yeah. it's, it's, it's sometimes hard you to ash them and you go, I win. And sometimes you ash them and they go, I have opened the God hand. Yep. I think typically if you have Ash against Drytron and they start with something like Nova or Herald, 
I think you just always hold for alpha these days. Yeah, I mean, especially after you see the Ammer factor. I think they're deciding on the Sangan ad here. It's a big decision. Like, depending on the hand, you really need Arborea. But you also really want to search Droll because it wins the game on the spot. Yeah, he's probably trying to calculate right now if he can continue without the Tuner Axe Getting test. Ash. I wonder if we already Ash. opened the Droll. That would be really good. Yeah, I, there's no world where you take Ash over Droll, so I would have to say Droll's in hand. And there has to be another way to ex extend with the um, tuners and stuff. There's one. If all we make is the uh, Griffin Rider and then we end on Droll Ash in hand, I imagine that that's enough unless we've opened, like, exactly Gamma and for some reason we have no way to prevent the Zeus line and no way to crack back, but... I mean, it seems like if you're searching stuff like that off Sangen, you've already got everything you need. Can you activate Drytrons under Droll? I assume they're optional to add, right? Um, like you can just still like summon yeah, Alpha Zeta. Yeah, you could effect, just right? get them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you open multiple names, you can still like you can do some stuff by like going into Mubeta Fafnir, sending Medionis, and then adding it back from Grave, but very little, because the payoff for those, of course, is adding more cards to hand. Uh, Shrug Ooh. popped into chat saying they are optional. You can just summon them. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're under Droll, you're basically almost always just going to be like going for Zeus, right? Yeah. So as long as you can set that up, that should hopefully be enough. But going to be a lot to fight through potentially. Ooh, opening the Basil Rose with no access to the Red Rose, it looks like. Grabbing Draco back here. Any tuner is definitely just going to be game, I think. Uh, just got to see how he accesses his tuner. We didn't Already search Arborea. And we haven't searched Arborea, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I think the... Uh... That's, where... That's where we find it. Yeah, there it is. So, you are in such a good spot here but discarding the um, roshu it's a bit strange right because that's how you get your rises or play i want to say because now you go hulk for the reds and then you make baron then you get the rocks rules but you don't get the float from that oh i guess you still get the uh the shooting riser um i don't think shooting riser sends anything relevant against this deck right it's, it's like just snow and uh we saw in previous games, Shrug is willing to, like, hold a Gamma until you snow and then pop the card that you snowed, which is just completely fine. It feels like it shouldn't happen. Uh, in previous matches, I think actually they may have played in Swiss, but we saw a snow face down what was expected to be, like, I'm making the rank one and then Zeus, and Shrug was like, no, no, I'm just going to make the rank one and Beatrice and then go to combat. So I don't even think it's really fantastic for that. Mm, yeah. All right, Baron time. Okay. Um, I think the biggest problem is going to be Droll. I'm pretty sure we would search Droll instead of Ash. So I think that's telegraphing the last two cards in hand are Ash Droll. Okay. Has to be. Well, here comes the shooting, right? Oh, the Dagda, rather. Oh, Dagda's great. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, wait, it's it's a set card. So we didn't either we didn't board into Droll. Or we prioritized Ash over it with the understanding that, like, it wouldn't matter? Oh, well. Okay. That a, uh, that's, a, that's a great one. Wow, that's a really yeah. good one. Yeah. I, maybe there's a world you don't side Droll against Drytron when you're going first, I suppose, if you're trying to keep as much space in for your engine and as well as bring in anti-spell. Because I think going first anti-spell is better than Droll. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> First action in main phase one is Lava Golem, so you can't use Hulk to go into the Scythe lock. We've seen that a couple of times at a shrug. Here's the Alpha pitching Alpha. That's a rough one. I imagine we... Do you Ash this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you do, but if there's, like, another name and a, a beta in hand, you are... Just need Gamma. What? Uh, Come on. No. Are you kidding me? Yikes. Are you kidding me? All right, so, I mean... <laughs> 
at the end of the day, it is adventure punk. You know, it might not have the material to go all the way. If one of these set cards is like a droplet, maybe we survive till next turn and the set card is like an infip in the uh, anti-spell column, you know? I don't know. You wouldn't be able to droplet. Yeah, because it hasn't been a turn. Oh. Um, I think best case scenario, these are just starter cards, right? It's like Nova and like something else. And then next turn you can try and play because I'm not really seeing lethal here. We didn't make Riser to send Snow and... Uh, we can Fateful to grab uh, Enchantress, normal Enchantress. That's 50, 67. Shrugs at eight. Uh, we could normal a three, make Chaos Ruler and maybe find something. I go for right because you have anti spell, so that keeps you away from the token. I think uh, so. He's got seventy two damage if he's drawn a normal summon. Yeah, but that's not eight, and that should probably play through whatever the set cards are. But let's see if he does it. Chat says this is why you play Messenger of Peace with Lava Golem. Shrug, come on, you should have played Messenger of Peace, dude. Come on now. Yeah, under anti spell. Oh yeah, chat Messenger of Peace would be great. <laughs> that's why you play Gravity Bind. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure without a, a monster top deck, you have no way to uh, to uh, to kill here. So, I don't know. Faithful. I think, like, going for the Dagda is like... Okay, so I think Scythe-locking Drytron isn't that good, but... You've drawn anti-spell, so you're thinking to yourself, okay, so if I have anti-spell, the only realistic play they have is Zeus. So how do I prevent Zeus? Well, Scythe is obviously the best way. But post-siding, I think the safest way to deal with Zeus is Snow. Um, because you can probably expect they're bringing in Droplet Dart Ruler or something like that. And I think that will probably stop the Scythe lock. And so it's just safer, I think, to go for Snow. Because you just book the XE and... The Dart Ruler essentially didn't do anything, plus you've got Anti-Spell to stop any sort of ritual play. I think that's how I would have played Normal it. Oh, there's a top roll. roll. Why are we... We go for a Link 1? Like, Link... We know they're on Anima. But that... What is happening? Well, Celine's okay. good. Um... We can go Celine into my good friend. Still not enough, though. No, it's a it's not word. enough. But the access code gets rid of the two cards, which I ah, guess we right. would assume. Yeah, are... yeah. So the access code popping under anti spell is actually really relevant. Yeah. This so, this just puts you on two cards. The the out would have to be, I mean, pretty much exactly uh, Ben Ten off the top, right? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, actually, any, any, any dry, dry drawn drawn does it. Works. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that good of a situation, actually. Ah, that I find myself in this situation against Drytron so often where I'm like, damn, if they just have any name, I lose. Yep. Also, it was really... I don't know if I would have normaled the droll there. I'm going to just kept the golem Double and the Nova. scythe to just keep the droll. Because that, that for sure stops you. Like, surely that yeah. stops you from dying no matter what, right? No, I don't think so. Card, we know the set card is right. So I, I think you have to put them on better have Triple a Alpha. Oh. <laughs> well, well, okay. They're gonna need another name now. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> it wasn't enough? Triple Alpha, that's so funny. Oh, oh that's, no. That's tough. Oh, God. Oh. So that opener okay. was that opener was triple alpha double nova. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so shrug. I was I was gonna say um, I don't think the droll would do a lot against Drytron in a simplified game state when their win condition is essentially Zeus, right? Zeus, yeah, like, yeah. yeah so fun. I think it was actually better to just put them on no cards and then just better have the top deck robot, which isn't a great win condition, admittedly. But I think that was the best option he had. All right, well we're moving into game three, and who uh, boy, so. This was uh, Drytron's old nemesis was the boarded games, but now there's a lot less that deals with it. We know that Droll is in the list, so Droll is coming in for sure, and Farfa brought up a good point where he mentioned, you know, keeping some cards out of your list for going first, prioritizing stuff like Anti-Spell. Now that they're going second, they get to cut Anti-Spell, put in probably the Gammas we're going to see again, um, 
but yeah, I think you just want up. all hand traps versus drytron yeah it's, uh you just stop them from like getting to like oh Alpha god Alpha. Gamma. <laughs> that's a good start all right it's not zeta at least <laughs> Right. It's resolving. Oh, Ash. Mm. I feel like they've got something. Ooh, wow. You don't want to see that, folks. <laughs> if your opponent ever adds uh, Draconids, you go, uh oh. That's like the fifth there best card. We go. There we go. Okay, it is. there's, there's roll. Control. All right. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, we're confiscating, okay. forcing the sentry. That's, that's potentially really good. Yeah. Right, let's see what we got. Um, TD Crow targeting Gamma? Oh, Holy shit, he's gonna play a three card hand. Whoa, these are. Th <laughs> That's. Uh, those are two really good ones and one comically bad one. I think, okay, so I oh, think you have man. to get rid of a Chantress, but you still have a link to into Hulk. I feel like you so... have to take Critter. Now, sleeper pick here. They Do you think the so? driver. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Do you, th do you think you put back the Sangha? Yeah, I would. I mean, it, it's every, okay. it's the whole line. It also gets you to Enchantress, right? Because you can make Cherubini and then send Enchantress. Uh, not just with Sangha. No, because you, yeah, because you'd need another three. You're right. Oh, man, this is a hard one for sure. Depends on what not... Shrug's hand is. I want to say Enchantress, personally. What, what we pick? We picked, you picked uh, Enchantress. We okay. picked Enchantress. Okay, set to... Link Rebo pass says. All right, okay, what are these back you. row? Oh my gosh, anti spell. No, no anti spell. Back would be... row. Ooh, if it was anti spell, we'd give them enchantress. Oh True. wait, what? oh no. no, 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 sorry, I thought. Oh, okay. we drew e Telly oh, off the top. Oh no, oh no, that's that's oh, the that is literal unfair. best that's draw reasonable. on the deck. The quite literal e best Telly. draw on the deck. He's so good. He's just uh -huh. too good. <laughs> oh my god. Can I just say, by the way, like people voting in the chat, you guys just went 90% all in. Can I just say, statistically, your uh, gains from that in terms of channel points are going to be so pitifully low that it's not worth it. What you have to do is believe in the reverse sweep by Jason here, which is exactly yeah, what Yeah, or tell him. <laughs> Hit their ass. Chad, yeah, you're not like, acting yeah. rationally, economically speaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's the Cherubini. We get to trigger the Sangin here. Maybe a called by would do a lot of work. Nope. Oh man, I just I really don't know what it could possibly be in hand, or uh, in in back row. In hand, we know it's Draconids. Uh, so it's not Nova. Um, I think it's most likely a dead second talent. And. I don't really know if Drytron bring like has like imperms and stuff, especially not going first. Yeah, I mean, um, so I'm gonna hazard a guess and say like it's probably one of those is probably a second talent. I can't think of any other dead spells in Drytron. We got the Enchantress anyway. Jeez. Yep. What do I suggest investing in in these trying times? Uh, funny pictures of cartoon monkeys. Yeah. So, e Telly Sangan, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that should just be game, right? <laughs> Has to be. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just so funny. I'm truly shocked. <laughs> if you're Shrug, you are mad right now. Oh, I yeah, would I'd be, be fuming. You, man. I would be so bad. Found e Telly off the top after I, because you would always pick e Telly there. Pitch the driver. Griffin Rider summon. We know the entire hand. You know, right? I think if his hand would be E, Telly, Sangan, Enchantress instead of the driver, like, there's no good choice there, really. Yeah, you, you'd probably just lose. <laughs> you just hit surrender. <laughs> this is so rigged. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, this is what being a punk synchro player is like. You, like if you your deck has, if your deck has 40 good cards and four garnets, statistically, you're just going to draw one of the 40 good cards. Like, that's the whole purpose of the deck, is that it's almost all bombs. Like, oh my god, they yeah. drew a bomb and their deck full of bombs. Crazy. Yeah, like, that's, like, the whole point of pile decks. It's it's almost frustrating, because, like, every piece of whatever engine they draw is just, like, good. I'm surprised he's not playing Prosperity. I think that card is really good in this deck. Yeah. My, well, uh, clearly he doesn't need it. He'll just draw the good cards. Yeah, that's the yeah, trick. Why would absolutely. you? 
Do we know he's not playing it? I thought maybe he did in the previous match. Uh, well, I, we've seen a few of his features, and he hasn't used it once, so I'm just going to assume he's not running it. Didn't need it. <clears throat> it's like saying Dragon Link drew a dragon. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Uh, how do we kill here? Halk, that's a good way. Yeah, that's a good start. We, we can just access um, code, right? We go Halk into yeah. Valor. Uh, I think Jet's better, because if you go into the Spellcaster, you have to use a token. Um, and that means you only do 70-something, 70 73. What do you mean? Uh, so if you summon, like, a, a Veiler here, you go uh, Link 3 into... Oh, I guess Selene works as well. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he playing Jet? Actually, I haven't seen him run Jet at all. Uh, we've seen it. Oh, okay. We don't. I don't think he's playing the Calamity stuff, which I really appreciate. I think that card is not good. I think that's more of a Punk Therion thing rather than Punk Synchro. Right. That deck's also pretty scary, just saying. It's a little spooky for sure. Yeah, it's uh, I, I feel like it just loses to Droplet and Dart Ruler harder than this deck does because at least this deck does things under Dark, Dark Ruler and Droplet. Mm -hmm. Like you have your Snow Send, you have a ton of hand right. traps. Punk Therion deck doesn't really have that many hand traps and it definitely doesn't go for Shooting Riser, I think. I think Calamity the fact that it's cool. for Shooting Riser makes it kind of worse, but I don't know. Sure, yeah. I was going to surrender, uh, and that yeah, is uh... it. Your June 2022 Chalice Line Monthly Champion is Jason Leonard on Adventure Punk. Oh my god, what a what a goof and a gaff of a match. That was incredible. And shouts out to the 19 16% of you who thought that was going to be the outcome.